Okay. Are you good to go? Okay, so we start with the <clears throat> with the second part, which is about visual and layout testing again with Appium. This is a bit different than uh, the first part. This is less about presenting how we do things at Carousel. This is more a look into this field of testing with some ideas. I'm going to present some uh, frameworks that can be utilized for that. So it's more of presenting ideas and giving you some some thoughts to, to look in, further look into. Uh, all working demos but it's not as full-fledged as the framework you, you've seen before. So basically, it will be three parts. Uh, first, something, yeah, some very simple use case. So basically, instead of finding an element by very complicated XPath expression or CSS ID, I want to, to put it simply, I want to do find that picture. Because sometimes we don't really want to care about locator. We don't also don't care about how big is this image. We just want it to be on our screen. We also don't care where is it and whether it's a pixel perfect match. So for example, uh, is some some banner, some third party logo that we are we need to show? Is it there? Something like that. There are a couple of use cases where this could be uh, could be interesting, and there is a testing framework probably some of you will have heard about Sikuli that does something like this is like a visual aid for for test automation. And I looked into that. There is a Appium integration called Sikupium. It's like some GitHub project. I uh, thought I want to share it, and then I looked into it and tried to make it run. And it's like uh, two years, two years old when the last change was done. I can share the project. It's basically integration of Sikuli that does this image uh, recognition test automation in Appium. And it all sounds nice and well. The problem is it doesn't really work, or I spent the better amount of a weekend trying to get it to work. Uh, it's not been maintained, so it doesn't really work with uh, the newer versions of Appium. It uses OpenCV for image detection, and there is probably just one combination of versions of Appium and OpenCV that would make this work. So I thought, actually, what, what do we want to have? We want to have a uh, possibility to find images on our screen, whether it's a phone or browser. And since Sikuli uses OpenCV, I thought, why not integrate that directly? <clears throat> so the test case, maybe this time we start from the feature file. And the reason why this is only Android is because only Android has this little icon. So what we want to do is ensure that on the Stack Overflow app, this icon, which is uh, icon to ask a question, is visible. So we have a feature file for this. Given I am on the home page, I can see the ask a question icon. So then this links to Oh, sorry. And I actually done a little bit more just to demo that it's not like matching a 
the picture pixel by pixel. I have the icon itself, I have a blurred version, I have one that's like slightly rotated and one where the image is distorted. And then just to, to double check, there's one icon that should not occur. Uh, there's a icon of Facebook. So I'll show you a bit more code here. So we can also define a, a threshold. So for example, I think the default is I, I put 95%, so 95% match. For the ones that are slightly more distorted, you need to, to lower that, otherwise it wouldn't match. Actually, I can show you the images so you get an idea. So that's the original one. It's tilted by 10 degrees. This is... I think it'll, some lens filter applied, and this is some Gaussian blur. So, getting back to the code. It's a very simple, uh, short piece of code that uses OpenCV. OpenCV is, a, I think, a C library, um, but there is a Java version that uses uh, JNI, a Java native interface, to be able to, to call OpenCV. So it's basically just a Maven dependency you need to add, and then you can use it. There's not a lot of code that you need to detect an image. Uh, some yeah, very simple, cheap trick to detect it in multiple sizes. We could do something more sophisticated, but this works surprisingly well. So you look for the image in the original size. If you don't find it, you scale it up by, by a factor, search again, scale up more, and then you do the same scaling down. And this is a very naive approach, but it works perfectly well. So in many, many cases, you don't have to come up with anything more uh, sophisticated. There are other frameworks you could use. There's something called uh, Image Magic that can do similar things. And there are some frameworks who can do a size invariant uh, template matching, matching images on your screen out of the box. So this is more of a proof of concept. So let's run this. We actually uh, run it before because the Stack Overflow features for Android uh, ran all the tests. Hmm. Let's see, I'll run this from here. So this is the scenario. Cucumber also is very nice uh, log output. And given I'm on the home page, I'm looking for this icon, and you can already see um, found with match quality 0.95 something, 9288, and even the very distorted image, still a match of 75%. So it's probably safe to assume that this is a match. But in almost all real-life scenarios, you will have matches well well above 90, 90%. And it should also say, yeah, the Facebook icon is not, is not on that page. So basically how it works, like Selen uh, Selenium WebDriver can take a screenshot of whatever is on your, on your screen. And then I use OpenCV to uh, do image comparison. This is not very, not a very big feature, but I think it's something in certain scenarios that can come in handy. You just have this one element you cannot match any other way. 
and you need to make sure it's present or you need to you can also click on it afterwards or interact with it and instead of using a different framework to achieve this with just a little bit of code you can easily integrate it in your existing selenium or appium solution do we have uh, questions yeah sorry sorry there you go one and then two is this uh, realize the color okay uh, do you have any apis for like uh, ocr uh, support was here do you have any support like ocr um i'm not sure about open cv if they support ocr there are other frameworks that can do it i don't have a demo for that but it's it would be a logical extension of of this just okay. haven't done it for for this demo I'm just wondering. Sorry, we we're recording, so we need to uh, use the mic for the questions. I got scolded during the break. Is this can recognize the color? Uh, it's also configurable. I think by, by, by default it's using grayscale. Hmm? How can we do that? Um. So the question was what I can show. No, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare this part. But the framework is uh, very, uh, very strong. So there are a lot of features. So I l looked at the documentation that's possible to do. So again, this is more about showing, showing options, showing what could be done. But no, there's no demo for that. I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> any, any more? Actually, how does the image matching works? Is it like uh, it will match in any point of any part of the screen, or um, do we have a control wherein say like I want to match the image at this particular position of the screen? Is it possible to add it as a assertion? Uh, yes, <coughs> yes to both. So uh, OpenCV tells you exactly on which where it found the image so it searches the whole um, uh, the whole uh, screen the whole screenshot you you give it um, it gets a bit tricky when you do the scaling bit because then you have to scale back the coordinates it returns you <coughs> but it's it's very well possible so it returns the match the quality of the match and the coordinates where it was found and then you can do assertions also on the on the coordinates and say I expect this image to be there it needs to be extended a little bit but yes yeah, it's, it's possible so I just got it that uh, it will check that it will resize the image it will distort the image and they'll compare it with the original screenshot to see that where it is Okay, so if I want to check the image is not distorted, can I check it like using this technique? Because internally it's resizing 10%, 20%, then distorting and then comparing it. Yeah, when uh, not, not not resizing the uh, the image itself, but the screenshot. Okay. So the so original image stays that, the same. Yeah, if I want to see that the UI is not distorted, the icon in the UI is not distorted. Yeah. Can I do it? Uh, then you would need to make sure that you have the icon in the same size as the screen resolution. Yeah. Yeah. So it's possible. It, it is possible. You need to re rethink it a little bit. Again, the, the algorithm to do the scaling is more for demo purposes mm -hmm. than anything else. So in your case, what you need to ensure is you need to control the, si the screen size, and then you have uh, the image in a size that matches that. Exactly. Then you can check for 100% match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Let's continue. Okay. So. 
<coughs> Another use case that's very common, and I know a lot of uh, companies use, it's called visual regression testing. The idea is to have a baseline. So I define a carousel login screen on, I think that's Android. Yeah, uh, looks like this. And every time I encounter the screen, I compare the two images and see where it differs. And you can already see here that is a bit tricky because sometimes it's only a few pixel off and it's already marked as a difference where there shouldn't be a difference. Obviously, there's a username, there's a password. Okay, that's, that's clear. But the other differences are very subtle. And then you have to take care of that. You have to have a threshold how much, if it's just one pixel off, do we still accept it? And then the things you wouldn't consider at first, at first. so for example, obviously, you have to ignore the time, the battery, and the signal strength of your of your network. And for some reason, the, the, the keyboard is different. So that's all like these small things that make it a little bit uh, trickier. So for this one, what I want to show, and this is the only not pure open source solution. It's called Apply Tools. It's a paid uh, third party service for visual regression testing. Uh, the reason I chose this one is because it's very uh, simple to integrate, easy to show, and give you an idea of what this concept is about. But there are open source tools that do basically this, the same thing. You can also integrate with, with Appium. So let's have a look at this. Martin, oh, one question here. So instead of taking the whole page, uh, can we uh, take the screenshot of username and password session and just come here? Yes, this is also possible. Yeah, in that way you can get rid of the battery signal and everything. Yeah, the, um, oh, actually I can show you right now. Uh, this is one approach. The other one is to ignore certain parts of the of the image. So for example, for the, for this, this is actually the, the splash screen of the app. I say, okay, this part of the screen I'm not interested in. Please ignore. And Apply Tools, it's called Apply Tools Eyes, has has a lot of other ways to do things. I can ignore a region, is what I did here. Um, you can have define a region where you only want to evaluate if the layout matches and not all the pictures. Some ways to fine tune this. And to be honest, I'm not an expert with Apply tools. It's just, again, uh, to bring across the general idea. Uh, if anyone wants to try it out, I'll let you uh, play with it some more. So, but the basic idea is you have a baseline, and every run you check against that baseline. And when there's differences that you don't expect, uh, you fail the test. So for this one, what I've done, uh, we've been talking about the, the ba uh, page object pattern we use for, for our test framework. And in our case, every page extends a base page. And that's the location where we put this functionality. So this is the template matcher we saw in the example before. And then this object is Apply Tools Eyes. And so the base page just gets a method that's called check window. And it does the check. And then returns returns itself. And the reason why it does that is because then you can do something like, let me check. 
yeah, <clears throat> for the login. So I just changed the step definition. I call on the on, on the home page page object I call check window. Then the Apply Tools check runs. Uh, then go to login, check again. We come to that in a moment. Then I perform the actual login, and then I check a third time. Once, maybe let's run it, and then we see the result. And this is again just a simple uh, change in the configuration file. I want to enable this. Let's just double check. Yeah, Android. So the test should look about the same. Might be a small, the only small difference is it takes a little bit longer for the framework to take the screenshot and send to uh, to eyes, Apply Tools eyes. Another thing you need to configure is the you get an API key for the uh, for the for the framework. I'm not going to show you that, but it's also just a, a configuration. So if we look at the log. It should oh that's obviously not gonna work because it's the wrong example. Let's go again. Because it's a carousel after all, so we wouldn't be too happy if I don't show any demo with our own app. Here we go. So you can see in the <coughs> log file already this feature is enabled, so performing check on that class. And that's also the key um, which Apply Tools then uses to um, aggregate uh, the screenshots. So what you need to do before we start a feature there is a cucumber hook. There's some initialization. And it basically says if Apply Tools Eyes is enabled, then you have to call open on that object. And as an identifier, I give application name and the platform. So once the test is done, I can just go to my dashboard. Okay, we have a new run for Android. It's green, everything passed. And that was the baseline, and that's the result we got. So, for example, if we... Let's remove some, some of these ignores, then we'll see that this part doesn't match. And here the same. And for this one, 
we have to right, we have to ignore, for example, this banner part because that's uh, some uh, that that's changing some promotions or different um, uh, different ads. So the same, again, this is a demo for Android. I have a demo for web, but I'll spare you guys. Uh, this one works again across all, all platforms. And don't get uh, turned off too much by the thought that this is a tool you have to pay for. There are open source alternatives that work the same way. The nice thing is you have this dashboard that already comes uh, out of the box, otherwise you would need to to build something like that. Okay, any questions about this before we move to the to the last bit? Okay, almost there. So we already mentioned before. Some use cases, this works very well, but there are some limitations, especially if you look at the last example, um, the last two, like on Carousel, you have all our listings, I think Amazon search results or Stack Overflow results if you search for, uh, for something. It's a bit hard to do a visual testing here because what can you really test? because you have to exclude all the images, because they're different, you have to exclude all the descriptions because they're different. So in this example, you could probably just check the header, which is not very useful. No, nope. okay. So maybe there's something, something better we can do. Well, let's consider a different approach. Uh, it's called layout-based testing, or well, that's how I would call it. And there is one framework I just learned about very recently. Uh, it's called Galen, which happens to have a Java version. You can, you can, you guys can look it up, and very nicely integrates with Selenium and Appium. It's the last bit I'm going to show. So if you have Galen, you have a specification of your test case. We'll need to use an editor with syntax highlighting. So it's a bit similar to how we defined uh, um, locators previously for the, for the test framework. In Galen, they're called objects. So I say, this is my username field, this is my password field, and I want to identify it by an XPath. Maybe now you get an idea why it's a bit slow on Android. And then you can define how you expect the layout to look like. Again, very simple. I want the username field to be above the password field. I want it to be vertically aligned the same as the password field. I want it to be the same size as the password field. And I want it to be the same size as the login button. So for example, let's look at the, at the app once more. Oh, this is carousel, uh, I'm already logged in. Let's log out. So <clears throat> very simple, this text field, this text field, this login button. And this is the description how of how I expect the layout to look like. And if we have a quick look at Galen Framework, this is probably the guy it's named after. And that's the language guide where you can see what you, what you can do. And just give you a quick overview. You can have a look at that yourself later on. 
basically you can define that certain UI elements have to be near to each other. They, you can define that by pixel. You can define that percentage below, above, left, right, inside. Like a button has to be inside a specific container, has to be centered or positioned a certain way inside a container. This is all things that couldn't be easily achieved with other forms of visual testing. And you can also do some things that, uh, here we have the alignment example, you can also do some things that you would usually use Selenium for where you check the text. So there's a lot to automate with Galen alone, even if you don't want to use other features of Selenium. So let me show you how it integrates. It's again uh, pretty simple. So the base page gets another method. This one is called check layout. It could probably be refactored a little bit to be even nicer, but basically you find the spec file, which by naming convention I put in the same package with the same name as the Java class dot spec, and then call Galen check like layout on that. And Galen just needs the web driver uh, and the yeah the spec file. And after after feature is completed, I'll aggregate all the results and put them into a report. So let's run this one. Disable the other one. It doesn't take so long. Okay. Don't worry about the <coughs> exception that's known bug uh, about taking screenshots, which I probably have to file with the guys, developers of Galen, or maybe find a workaround. <coughs> but everything else works. So test again is successful. And now we should have a report somewhere. It's a nice HTML report and tells us exactly <coughs> which checks have been performed on which fields. And let's try to, to break something so you see that as well. And let's run it again. So now we say username field should be be visible below the password field, which obviously doesn't make sense. And we said the width should be 90% and we change the text here as well. Let's run it one last time. And let's hope we get some errors. Uh, 
and <clears throat> as we see three of the tests failed so the only thing that's not working yet as I said I have to figure that out usually would have a screenshot that tells you exactly where things don't don't match but even this report is is quite helpful and you can do a lot of tests that are hard to do with other frameworks and functional test what you usually do with selenium and appium only goes so far if your layout is screwed up it can make your app uh, or your web application unusable for for human and selenium might still be able to access it even though it looks crazy because all the elements are there but it's also important that they're at the right place so this is why where galen comes in handy yeah uh, now we have tested with only login uh, page spec for one device right it's the same format it will not be same for the another device if the resolution may change so is it possible to manage the different spec for the different tech devices execution like in case of parallel is it possible to manage so the question was different specs for different platforms or for different uh, yeah it's, it's possible again for demo purposes we don't don't have that you need to I think Galen supports that out of the box within one spec file even uh, would need to look up the details but it's a very common use case so they should cover that again for different platforms now is a simple approach just different files and different packages but it's the same like we had the question with the JSON file for the locators the same here you can could uh, combine it into a single file and I'm pretty sure Galen would support that but to be honest I need to look that up myself uh, Martin one question here so let's say we baseline the image with iPhone 5s and if you are running our test against iPhone X since there will be a difference in the screen resolution uh, will the test fail or pass it depends what uh, what specs you defined it's specs that uh, check um, the distance between objects by pixel it will probably fail so you need to have different specs for different devices if it's just simple tests like we have here that one element is above or below another one or they're all the same size or they're all aligned the same that should not depend on the screen resolution Uh, I see actually we specify uh, the object identification for gallon so can you go to gallon spec yeah so um, should we specify the um, objects specifically for uh, gallon or can we reuse the ones we defined for the page objects it's also a good question uh, if we decide to build that in to our framework we need to discuss that uh, here at carousel then this is definitely something I want to look into how we can reuse it because now you're defining it twice mm, one way could be that you define them in one place and then you have your framework generate the Galen specs from a JSON or from property files or from whatever we, we use mm, so yeah should be there is no out of the box solution because our uh, the way we do the locators in our framework is a bit is our own solution so Galen obviously doesn't support that out of the box but it's easy to build something that can generate the Galen specs from what we have it's also for for later stage if we would want to make this production ready is definitely something we need to do yeah I have one more question so here Galen uh, what information will take from APM comments I mean what we need to pass the parameters actually apart from the spec internally how it will so 
What do you need to pass from Galen to Appium? Yeah. So basically, the Galen uh, comment the spec, right? How it will depend on the APM. Um, Galen, you pass Galen, Galen the the web driver so that you that Appium that you use with Appium, and you pass the spec. These are the two things it needs. It just uses the same web driver you use for the rest of your tests. And this way, you, if the web driver has the capability set, so which device to test against and all these things, um, and that's, that's apparently all that Galen needs. And the spec, you pass the location to the spec. Okay. Same information we can see from the XML when we do inspect the elements as per the device, right? In the XMLs, we can see the, all the spec information. So I thought maybe Galen also depending on the same XML file. When we try to capture the object properties from the Android or iOS, they have their own uh, APM also have the inspector tool. Yeah. So when we do inspect the element, we can also see the same properties, how much the width it has. But we don't see the information internally clearly, the how much uh, width it is, the gap between the one component to another component. So, so we just wanted to see, uh, maybe offline session we can discuss on this. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure I understand the question completely. So is it about where to get the locators from? Correct. So how this Galen uh, will talk to the each and every object property and get the uh, values or information from that object? Hmm. Uh, Galen talks using the, the web driver. Okay. Maybe we can, we can discuss the details okay. afterwards. Any other questions? Yeah, just building on top of this, um, uh, is there any way of uh, integrating the results that Galen gives chance out into your normal test? Because if you see your test actually passed, I'm, I'm pretty sure you were piggybacking on the login test and running this side by side. So these failed and that basically passed. So is there any way of integrating the test reports together? Uh, yes, there is. Actually, the, the Galen demo makes the test fail if the layout doesn't match. i just disable that. Uh, if you just want to have a pass or fail, that's quite straightforward. If you want to integrate the results, um, that might be a little bit more difficult if you want to know within the JUnit test what exactly failed. But if it's just whether layout is good or not, that's a standard standard functionality. Okay, so I think so maybe just two links to share in the end. So this one uh, everything that I've shown, I put a little proof of concept demo on GitHub, a very stupid name, uh, yet another Selenium wrapper, as if there are not enough. So it's mainly for, for demo, but if anyone wants to try it, use it, contribute to it, we're probably going to use that internally for, for Carousel. If anyone else wants to contribute, please feel free, have a look the demos, see if there's anything that could help you in any way. Um, so it's, on, it's all on GitHub. The first part of the presentation that's um, already on master branch and released, you can just integrate it uh, with Maven. It's on Maven Central. Uh, the other, the other bits with the visual testing that's on a on a branch, but you should also be able to find it because it's not not that stable. If you have any any questions about it, just I'll have my name cards with me. Just uh, contact me. I'm I'm glad to help. And finally, as I already mentioned before the break, Sham uh, has a set up in a Slack channel for our Appium meetup where we will announce uh, the next meetups.
And we can also use this for, for other discussion to, to stay in touch with each other and really try to, to build a QA and testing community uh, in Singapore. So thanks all for coming. I uh, hope it was... <laughs> you've heard something that is useful for you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Martin. I think I have learned a lot of new things today. I think you guys also learned. I hope so, right? Have you? Oh, cool. So, uh, a special thanks to Carousel for sponsoring of the Food Done venue. And Satish, yeah, Satish, thanks for recording the video. You know what? The first part of the session is already on YouTube, and I will share in the Slack channel the link to that one. So it's been uploaded to engineers.sg, so you can have a visit and you can find the video over there. So uh, just let us know if you would like to, if you want to take a presentation or if you want to share about your experience with APM or mobile testing. So you can have, you, we can sponsor you the venue to talk about that. And if you want to conduct the meetup in your office space, then that also possible. Just let us know whether your organization is okay to go with meetup at your place. So once again, thanks everyone. Okay. So just one final uh, thought before I forget. I also want to say thanks for, uh, yeah, for Carousel for having, having us here. Uh, and for everyone who organized it, Charlotte, Sham for the help, and Satish for all the technical setup and support. And it's good to know to have someone where you don't have to worry about tech failing on you. So appreciate that everything went so smoothly. Thanks a lot. And a special thanks to Rifa. Rifa just, Rifa and her team flew from Jakarta to Singapore to just attend this meetup. She's the organizer of Indonesia Software Quality Assurance Forum. So that's quite active forums in Indonesia. Thank you, Rifa, for joining us. Yeah.